Hello, YouTubers. This is a new session where uh, I'm joined here today by my dear friend, my brother Ken, and my brother Paul. And we are going to continue our discussions around creating. We're really just trying to create a library that you know allows you to one switch from remote to local. You know, when it comes to hues, but also switch from one provider to the next. Right. So, you know, just for the people who have never uh, seen these the series before or any of these sessions, um, let me kind of show you here what that world looks like. So uh, from a high level perspective here, you'll see, for instance, a lot of people will have an application. So this is your application right here. It could be an ASP.NET Core app. It could be could be anything you want. Right. So this is application and your application usually wants to talk to something right it could be a queue it could be an event bus it could be anything in the world right let's put a queue here because that's what we're really trying to build and then what you basically go and do now let's say that this is for instance this is an azure queue right so what you go do is that you go find that sdk right that allows you to kind of communicate with this with this queue so now your application relies on azure sdk like this and then as you are building this further you're basically going and saying okay now i'm even though it's at the broker's level so technically you are abstract there is still a problem with you going and saying well i don't have an internet connection and i want to run this in an airplane mode this is important because sometimes you want to put your code in a pipeline and your pipeline doesn't always have access your remote cloud there are so many reasons for it right one of it is also allowing people that technically just they just can't afford the cloud right they're not students so they don't have student discount or anything they're not even professionals they're just people that want to be able to build software and have fun with it so what we were talking about is an idea where we push these guys a little bit further and basically have something like this so let's say this is my a, a, a abstract uh, uh, standardized abstract uh, uh, provider right and I, I don't like sap but you know this just happened coincidentally um, and and what this library does is that it goes and says you can also run this against a local service as if it was listening to an actual queue so that's number one objective. The number one objective is to go and say, I want to run everything locally in airplane mode without having to connect to a remote provider. And if I need to switch to that remote provider, it will be just a configuration change. So that's number one. The other requirement is to be able to go and say, no, wait a second. I'm not just dependent on one service. I'm dependent on many, many other services. And this library intelligently can go and say, you know, your provider one, provider two, provider N, it doesn't matter. Based on that configuration, I'm going to give you that ability to kind of switch over. So that I'm going to call this, you know, X SDK and Y SDK and all that. So this is here is here is this one provider and then here is another provider for you. OK, so why is that important? Because if your application we're kind of pushing the standard a little bit further beyond the limits of just the application that you're working with so now you have this standardized library that you know exactly what are the exceptions that you expect this library to throw you know exactly what the response the generic response that you expect this library to throw and whatever provider is sitting behind that does not change your core application in any way shape or form so this way, we're basically going and saying, hey, when we first started standardization, we said all oh, your brokers are going to be your abstraction layer. And it's, it still is, except that these brokers are now dependent on also standardized libraries. And these libraries are, are the point of abstraction for you. For those who like to kind of dig a little bit deeper into the topic, highly recommend, and this is a new chapter that I added uh, in the standard recently, which is... At the chapter basically is called, it literally talks about under brokers, right under brokers. It talks a little bit about 
characteristics, all that, and then standardized provider abstraction libraries, right? And it goes into further, further details, you know, about the examples of this, how do we do it, you know, all that kind of stuff. As of today, I don't really have a concrete example to show people yet, which is a big problem because I want to show people, like, for instance, you know, for for people that use the entity framework, for instance, right? You know, we like to use the entity framework to talk to the database. Now, what happens if someone wants to use something like uh, uh, Dapper, right? How much changes is going to happen to their broker and foundation services when they decide to switch from the entity framework to Dapper? But what if there is a, a, a library that's sitting behind that scene that says, oh, you can publish extension libraries. And, you know, these libraries can allow us to connect to other services and other providers without changing the core generic models that you get from uh, from that library in terms of exceptions and responses and all that kind of stuff. That's the theory. Questions, comments from anyone in here? I don't know, Paul probably has, uh, what are you thinking? Yeah. It's interesting because... Um... Having been quite a hefty, I think it's fair to say, a quite heavy adopter of the standard. Mm. Um, I, I've hit, particularly in the brokers, I've hit this problem where I don't feel that, um, so probably the best way to put it is, if the broker's meant to be that line that you draw between the internal and the external, <clears throat> I've often felt that the standard is documented in such a way that there's stuff on the internal side. So things in our foundation services, mm -hmm. just at a basic CRUD level, mm -hmm. that requires us to have knowledge of the external. Mm -hmm. and, and that for me, it, it doesn't feel like you're drawing the line, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, I think this is a thing that I've kind of questioned you on in the past and sort of said, Hey, like, how do we get over this, this problem? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so the way that I've kind of designed my standard stacks essentially mm -hmm. is I have a, you know, project name dot services and that mm -hmm. contains my various service, um, mm -hmm. layers. Um, so, you know, I'll have my foundations, my processings, my, my orchestrations in there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have my project name dot data project. Mm -hmm. And in there, I'll put my, my brokers effectively. And my brokers will depend on something. So in the case where, for example, I'm talking to a database, mm -hmm. um, let's say I'm using entity framework for that. Mm -hmm. I'll have a project name dot data dot EF that mm -hmm. defines the DB context. Yeah. Now, yeah. EF itself is um capable of a level of abstraction right so you can use ef with say sql server or you could use it with something like cosmos and so what i then do is i say okay the actual model providing stuff so things like the migrations i would put in my project name dot data dot ef dot specific database type Mm -hmm. assembly so mm -hmm. i'd have like a dot ms sql assembly and mm -hmm. that would contain um I, i've created like an interface where what i essentially do is i say hey this is a you know i my project model builder um and then my <coughs> excuse me my db context that's defined in the ef assembly just calls into that mm -hmm. and the way that i provide that is through at the app level i have a dependency injection rule where i pick the right model to pass in mm -hmm. so if i want to depend on sql i can make that decision at the app level i don't have mm -hmm. to make it in my code or mm -hmm. anywhere in like my foundation services or anywhere in my brokers yeah as far as my brokers are concerned they're going to build some kind of db context yeah so it doesn't it matter knows yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it knows to an extent that it's depending on EF, but it doesn't yeah. kind of know anything about the database. It doesn't know that it's SQL, if you see mm -hmm. what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, and that for me has always been like a weird. So like I've got other scenarios, things like SendGrid, Twilio, mm -hmm. yeah, those those kinds of integrations, um, Azure Tables, Queue, Service Bus, 
all, all these like little things, they, they seem like really trivial things. And then you look at the code samples for them and you end up writing, say, 100, 200 lines of code. So my theory on it is that from the point of view of the standard, what you have is you have a set, a set of, much like we do with our services, right? At the foundation mm -hmm. layer, we have an iFoo service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that depends on an iFoo broker in my code mm -hmm. base. Mm -hmm. And my broker builds um, what I would refer to as a data context. So in the context of EF, it's a, it's a thing that inherits from DB context. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm talking to something like a REST API, um, something like Twilio or SendGrid, um, I might build like, um, you know, a Twilio client or something mm -hmm. or a service bus client. Um, but those, uh, what I would probably do is I would build some sort of context object that wrapped mm -hmm. up that 200 lines of code, which was purely mm -hmm. just like making REST calls or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's always felt... I feel like I'm talking way too much, but it's always felt oh, to me like there's a lot of code that's like in that um, in that broker layer, and it's purely to satisfy that need that the thing that you're integrating with has forced upon you, and mm -hmm. there's there's no like standard compliant way to avoid it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my kind of abstraction was to say, hey, I've got my iFoo broker. It's going to yep. depend on this thing. It may have some code in it, but it's going to be the bare minimum to discuss stuff with whatever exactly. the API is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and <laughs> just just so you know, like the uh, what I was trying to show here, your foundation services will never be one hundred percent pure abstraction. Like you're never going to be because you still have to handle exceptions that are emitted by the whatever dependency you have. But once you start into processing and all that, that's truly abstract, right? Mm. Like like your foundation services, like I always call them, I call them the last point of contact with the outside world because there's still leakage of exceptions that happen, right? Your exceptions are being thrown and it needs to kind of uh, kind of localize and, 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 and categorize these exceptions. But I agree with you 100%, you know, on the topic of we really, really need to go and say, even though your concrete class, your broker concrete class is is really throwaway, you know, because what we really care about is that interface. Yeah, yeah. The interface says you need to have insert, select, delete, you know, update and all that, right? Even though that's the case, it's still now, and this is this is an upgrade. Like you this is not something I've been saying. No, out of a lot of discussions with you and Kenny and you know, talking to people, you know, that are trying to use SynGrid, I was like, well, you know, why don't I just push the abstraction a little bit further and say, let's create a, an abstract provider library. And this abstract provider library, what it's gonna do, it's gonna go and say, here's the exceptions you will always have to handle. Whether you want to work with SQL or Oracle or MariaDB or whatever you want to work with, it doesn't matter. Hmm. See what I'm saying? And that that's pretty much what you're doing now, except that you're creating your project locally. You call it EF data, something like that, right? Hmm. I want it to be something that goes out there so people can download it, you know, plug it into their 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 projects and then configure it and just move on. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. So, you know, when I have, um, you know, business logic that's, I don't know, in my case, I'm dealing with things like supply chain finance solutions or something, right? I, I want to be focusing on, yeah, yeah, despite the boringness of it, I want to be focusing on the supply chain finance business logic problem. I don't want to be focusing on the SQL problem, if you like. Yes. Right? My business logic doesn't care that it's a SQL exception. Yeah, it cares something's gone wrong. I now need to react to that. Yes, exactly. You know, the, the fact that it's a SQL thing that's gone wrong or a Cosmos concurrency exception, it's like, so what? Who cares, right? A, a problem happened. I tried to do a CRUD thing, you know, on an endpoint somewhere um, that failed. OK, right. What, what am I going to do to react to that? And to my mind, it feels that like, like you say, when you when you get up into like the the, the processing services, that's the thing when sort of like at that level, the way that the standard is documented, you're saying, hey, we're, we're truly just dealing with something internal. 
-hmm. But the fact that that's happening at the foundation level at the moment is also an issue for me because like take the um, take something like entity framework, right? Mm -hmm. If I want to consume entity framework in my foundation services and I want to use includes, I have to take a direct dependency in my business logic on EF. Whereas if that you thing is you in... Shouldn't do, you shouldn't do includes in your foundations. Yeah, exactly. Which is why I have a, that, that rule that I don't. I might expose the iQueryable so that the thing above, because limitations of OData and things like that, um, and that knows how to consume it, and that knows mm. how to talk to EF. But mm. like... I've got this sort of black box at the top and this black box at the bottom and my logic in the middle just needs to worry about what it's doing, right? Mm -hmm, to, some, mm -hmm. to some degree. So I'm sitting here thinking, well, I don't care about the boxes either side. <laughs> I just yep. want them to do their thing. I want it to work. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want to I, I want to be worried about the things that really makes my app different from someone else's app. This has always been the, the methodology, by the way, just to go and say, yeah. you know, if you have to do redundant work that doesn't even distinguish your app from someone else's application, then probably we should kind of abstract it. That's basically the rule of it. Because you want the engineers to only do the things that they care about. If I'm building a system for, you know, a, a, a soccer game, a football game, for instance, you know, the, what, what I want to do, like if I'm kind of organizing a stadium or something like that, why do I need to do the exact same thing? Someone else, you know, that's doing, I don't know, finance, someone doing, you know, marketing, someone doing, why, why do I need to do that exact same work? That's just dumb, really. So anyway, so, so, so generically, right. generically crud T on anything should just be a done deal solved, right? Just a click, right? Yeah. So, 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 so <laughs> a package, now. forget about it. <laughs> here's here's where where ken and i finally kind of got into you know the last thing that we stepped into you know as we're doing that we have a working prototype it's beautiful you know but you know we want to kind of productize this we want to make it something that people could just you know plug and play just just pull down from nougat and run and it does the magic we want to do something like this we want to go and say you know hey actually you know if you have your services like this Right. I want to be able to go and say uh, uh, add transient. Right. And then you have your I provider broker. Right. And then underneath that, you can have a bunch of options. And these options would basically go and say options dot use sequel. Or, you know, the same thing options dot use use Oracle. And it's still going to be the exact same exceptions. The beautiful part is that we want to go and say at some point, hey, use local. And that also applies to queues, right? Let me, let me make it a little bit better. I event provider, right? And this is I event provider like this. And this is I event provider here. So out of that event provider, I want to be able to have these options. And these options will basically allow me to kind of switch this context without changing anything else. The only thing that will change is the target provider, the, the, the technology that you're going to be talking to, and maybe the, the connection string that you're passing in here, the configurations. Right. And if we do it this way, that basically means your 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 main your main liner, your your classic app developer that's building the system is never ever ever gonna have to worry about changing the exceptions that they handle at the foundation level because it's always gonna be the very same the very same exceptions okay now the real questions here how do we do that <laughs> how do we do this option thing <laughs> yeah it, it kind of seems like more so having that you look at kind of like logging right and some of the other like hosting and things like in dotnet right they have the normal um, base package that has all the inner workings of things, but they also have an abstractions library, right? So, so first off, it's kind of like you need to have some abstra abstractions there so that way they can interact with the interfaces and not have to deal uh -huh. with direct services that we bring in. So that's one, right? Having that, that abstraction sort of library. Um, the next one, you look at extensions, right? It's kind of like you have 
Um, but even with entity frameworks, right? Like you, any framework, core, dot, whatever, you know, dot SQL server, right? Mm-hmm. So if you were to add, let's say, for instance, for this example, SQL server, mm-hmm. um, that would be kind of the extensions package, which inherently in the back end, it's going to also bring in your DLLs for your main, you know, yep. bread and yep. butter, right? So it's going to bring those DLLs down for them too. Yep. Right? So it's kind of like those two pieces together might give them what they need to be able to work within it and not have to worry about some of the inner workings and the classes and things like that. Most mm-hmm. matter of fact, well, those would be um, internals, right? Hey. Um, so basically it's, it's more so um, this, those two levels of packages might be able to kind of just add that at least at the, from the service collection extensions being like underneath that package I talked about for the extensions Mm -hmm. that might allow them to use that in their dependency injection, which will bring all the internals on the inside package, on the inside of that package, or bring all the internals into their DI. Ah, Um, okay. So so you're saying, okay, so that's how it's done. There is an abstraction library. Uh, There it is. Dependency injection, logging abstractions, Mm -hmm. configuration abstractions. Oh, wow. This is a pattern. And then these abstractions is what basically allows people to kind of pull it in and say, I'm going to add my concrete extension implementation here. And then people will be able to kind of leverage that. Or, or So is this abstraction basically an interface? It's just a bunch of interfaces? Is that what it is? Yeah, if you pull in some, some things, like especially like let's say, uh, what's a good example? Um, something maybe with like hosting or something like that, right? There with this uh, recently where I pulled in the extraction, ex- abstractions package and I was able to actually leverage the interface and that sort of thing. Um, they were already injected in BI, so I really just needed to um, reference them, right? So um, that's something I ran into. Um, I think logging has some ex- abstractions too. Um, See if I can things like that. Still one. No, the, the, the source of content. Trick. Uh, go ahead go ahead i was gonna say is the, is the trick here to figure out like problem domains so like you know one extraction is like some sort of crud provider right mm-hmm. so then we have a crud you know an abstract crud provider and then we say okay we can have a sql one we can have a a cosmos one we can have a oracle one yep that's exactly you know? what we're trying to do paul yep that's exactly what it is so and we can do the same for all, you know various other abstractions, right? Yep. So I you're guess. probably in in this case because what you're trying to do is provide effectively a library that just specifies in or specializes in abstractions. Mm-hmm. You, you're probably going to need like sub assemblies, which are like you know abstractions dot messaging, abstractions dot data storage, or yep. something. Yep. Yeah. Pretty much. You know, we want to be able to basically. You know, I think that pattern is okay as long as it falls within, you know, the uh, proper categorization, standardization kind of breakdown of, of. So I think if I understand this correctly, what Kenny's saying is that you have this abstraction library, and then what people are gonna go do is that they're gonna create extension library, and these extension libraries will implement that guy, right? So. You know, you're going to have many, many of these, and each one of them will have its own provider. It's basically, you know, giving you the option, okay, here's my Azure, here's my, you know, my provider X, you know, Z, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as people are inheriting from that or implementing that abstraction. Is that, did I say that right, Ken? Is that how? Yep, yep, yep. You see what I'm saying, Paul? So now, you know, and we want to take this across, like what are the most on demand, like I need to write like a, 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 a paper in the standard that says, here is, here is, here's how you create an abstraction. And here's how you implement that abstraction offer it as an extension. That's part of the series, right? While we're really targeting a concrete scenario with, because I actually need it. Like I actually need this library to exist today to be able to run acceptance tests against queues they're not really queues it's actually something that's running locally right but still you know i want it to behave the exact same way as if a message came from a queue you see what i'm saying and we have that we 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 got that working um I, i need to kind of find it and run it but it works it's perfect right okay so here's the thing this is just a you know a little you know homework for all of us right 
next time, you know, we kind of sync up, you know, next Friday, you know, I'd really appreciate it if, if we had a, an example of something like that. I will try to do it as well. I just want to see if, if, if the three of us and whoever is watching, you know, and anyone that wants to join us from the standard community, how do you implement something like that? There's already existing implementations out there. You know, when it comes to logging and all that, but these these sessions are going to have a little bit of homework for all of us to kind of play around and try and see what do you guys think? Do you think you know this is you know? And if you if you don't have the time or things get a little bit busy and stuff like that, totally fine. I, you know, I this is you know some of the things like we are we're we're evolving, we're pushing you know uh, engineering uh, beyond the limits, right? Like today, like these topics, the things that you, you know we are all talking about publicly like that. First of all, they're not popular topics that will get people like, you know, hundreds of thousands of views or anything like that, because it's not something, this is not kitty programming. This is not hello world stuff, right? This is the enterprise -y, you know, complicated stuff. So that's one part. The other part about this is that what I've seen, you know, in, in a lot of places throughout my, 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 my kind of craft time, you know, I don't like to say career, you know, the, I've seen that people solve problems quietly, you know, without sh sharing that problem with other people. And there is like 20 million people that are running into the same, the exact same problem. But the problem is so complex and enterprisey. They think to themselves, oh, I'm the only one that's running into this. Let me just kind of figure something out and ship it, right? Let me get that nice, you know, you know, ticket across the board and call it done, right? I want us to do things right. I want to have taste, I want us to have taste into the stuff that we're building, like some art into it, right? And that's what we're doing with these sessions, right? They're not the popular topic sessions, but they're definitely sessions that will help us simplify engineering for everybody else. Do we have a deal? Yeah. Yeah. And I think what's happening a lot of times, too, is like that software is proprietary. We're like if they can enterprise level. Right. They can't go sharing their code open yeah. source everywhere. Right. So a lot of those things stay in house and stay in the box. Whereas in um, what you typically do, which is which is awesome. Right. That's you kind of you get that discovery at the enterprise level and you say, hmm, how can I abstract this to work at a larger level? Yeah. And then you build an open source project that everyone yeah. can consume. And so you still keep your enterprise business logic here. Yeah, you now have a tool that everyone can leverage. Um, so I just don't see that. That's not really repeated a lot. You I just kind of just echoing what you're saying. <laughs> you just described the last five years of my life. That's exactly what you just did. I mean, like, oh look, here's a beautiful tool. Oh, we can use it here too. You know, and and usually, like, Restful Sense is is something that works this way. Restful Sense is the library was like, I'm sick and tired of trying to look for the response codes and creating the HTTP client and all that nonsense. I don't want to do that anymore, right? So I went and created RESTful Sense and it just exploded. It went in Neg NuGet, I think it had over like 150,000 downloads or something like that. Everyone wants this. It's just about solving it. Which one is this, Lucy? Hi, Lucy. Been a while. Can't hear you. Lucy. <laughs> It was me. Yeah, say hello to Hassan. Hello, Sam. Hey, Lucy. How are you doing? Did you remember to thank him for your present that you got you? Yeah. Oh, Hassan, you still play with it? I yeah, I brought a dinosaur toy. Yeah. Here you go, there. Drop it down. Okay. Coming. Okay, my friends. You know we're at time, but you know I appreciate your time today. Next session. Let's come up with some examples and I'll come up with example too, because this is a problem that really needs to be solved, you know, and once we solve that problem, I'm going to show you how uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Mm. Eventing in the standard, because we've talked about local events. We've talked about service bus events. We've talked about using things like Redis caches or queues. Mm -hmm. um, those are all abstractions of fundamentally the same problem. Yep. And I think that that is a real world problem that we can all relate to. And it's a key fundamental piece of the standard, I think, that really yep. makes it pop at scale. Yep, absolutely. I I'm telling you, like, once we build something like this, I will show you how I, how I use this in a real world system. Not, not just one, two of them, 
right? Mm -hmm. I'll show you how I solve it in real world systems that are, you know, really, really reliant. Because if I can't run acceptance tests end to end with something that's running locally, I can't just throw it in the pipeline without having to go through the whole, oh, give it a token. And then what happens to this cloud resource? It just sits there, you know, kind of gathering dust. That's that's not the way I want to do it, right? I want to run it locally and all that. So, so listen, guys, I appreciate you today. We're at time. But, uh, you know, for the next session, let's let's write some code together and let's see how we can push this further. I'm super excited about this project because in, in, in not in a million years would I have thought I would run into an idea like that. But then it gave birth to this whole idea of, you know, standard provider abstract library. Right. And this standard provider abstract library basically says this is the new standard. This is us saying don't use non standardized libraries. But what if you don't have one that can responds to that? Then you create a local project, work on it, and then publish it, and then publish it. I even made it as part of the discussion there. And of course, for the people watching, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please free, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. If you see a donate button in this video, please go ahead and you know share a couple of couple of dollars with any charity organizations that come with these videos because this is this is all the videos that will come in it's now i'm finally hit the point where i can be a, a youtube bar partner that can kind of help other charity organizations select uh, uh kind of uh, uh gather gather donations for that so if you see that donate button if you like what we're saying click that button help children around the world help people around the world and of course paul and ken thank you all so very much i appreciate you both i'll see you later okay take care <laughs> <laughs>